attraction you feel is perfectly natural. Your brain also works on electrical impulses. The electric car is here. I'm Mike Seal, and uh, I'm the founding director of the Vehicle Research Institute at Western. And I'm retired now, but I help out when, when I can. Runs with the original General Motors drivetrain. As you know, GM decided to crush them all. And there was quite a lot of protests. I'm sure some of you guys were amongst those protesting the crushing of all the EV1s. And I heard about it too and was somewhat dismayed, but I thought it's a done deal. However, I was having lunch with one of our deans, who's the dean of the Huxley College of the Environment. And I told him this, and I thought it was incredibly stupid for GM to crush what at that point was the best electric car ever built. A friend of mine built the first one, actually, Paul McCrady. Then the dean said, well, he had a good friend who was the vice president of GM, and he'd see what he could do. And he personally approached him, and as a result, Along with some other universities, we got these. Some are in museums, some are at other universities. GM lawyers insisted that boards be ripped out, wires be cut, and basically it was completely disabled. We decided we were going to see if we could reconstitute everything. And Nathan and a number of students and Dan Staley really got at it, figured out the entire wiring diagram, and rewired everything. And got it to the point that it should run. And then we discovered that there's key coding that has to be done to start it up, make it come to life. You've got to program the darn thing. And we didn't know what the program was, had the faintest idea. But thanks to some help from your local, this EV community, we discovered the scanner was a necessity and we were able to get one. We discovered that uh, the number one expert in the land on these machines is uh, in uh, Arizona. Mesa, Arizona. Um, what's his name now? Uh, Jeff, Jeff Thomas. Jeff Thomas, yes. And I called Jeff and he was thrilled that we wanted to get an EV1 run. He never actually had an EV1 in his shop. So he agreed to donate a week of his time and a whole lot of bits and pieces he had around and called in favors and so on. So we showed up there. We towed it down behind my motor home. First we went to EVS 23, wanted to see what's new, and then headed across to Mesa. And we, we had hoped it would be a day or two, and it turned out to be a week in Mesa, working all night, all day, all night, all day, until it ran. We were all totally thrilled. Then we heard that the LA uh, Electric Car Association was having a, a kind of a love-in sort of thing. Uh, I forgot what they called it, but at any rate... Renewable LA. Renewable LA, that was it. So, they asked, could we get it there, possibly? And we said, sure. All it took was getting the battery up in the car. It wasn't in the car. We were running the battery here in the car alongside long jumper wires. So all we had to do was install it, get it on the trailer, and get it over there in time for their event, which turned out to be, of course, another all-nighter. But we did that, we got there, and uh, we showed, drove it. We, we parked the trailer about a mile and a bit away. So we drove it through LA, following it very close to another car, because there's no plates, and drove it into their event, where they were totally thrilled. All the stars, the producer, the writers from that movie, I'm sure you've all seen. Who killed the electric car? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> they were there, and they wanted to jump in it. They, oh, it was, it was a marvelous to touch it, get in it, be driven in it, and so on. Uh, actually, they didn't get driven in it, though one of them was sitting there and determined to take off. When Chelsea Sexton, who was one of the movers and shakers on that movie and a lot of other things in L.A., stood in front and refused to budge until he was jerked out of the car. He was so determined to drive it. About that time, the clouds cleared. It had been raining. And there was a huge double rainbow that framed the car. And everyone went, that's getting pictures. The final touch was a black helicopter flew right into the middle of the rainbow over it. So you can imagine the comments 
about that. What was General Motors? Yeah. Oh, well. At any rate, uh, then we headed north to come home, and then we heard there was a an original EV1 stand-up charger that they had in front of all of the dealerships that we could have if we went over to see Bob Grinsmead, Grinsmead in uh, uh, Reno. So we headed over. Bob's got a marvelous collection of electric vehicles that he's built. One that appealed to me was a uh, nickel metal hydride powered uh, Mr. 2, the last series Mr. 2. Looks just like a Ferrari and I have a sort of a thing for Ferraris, so I really like that. But he's got pickup trucks, he's got a van. In fact, he took us downtown in the van. I don't think he has any car or any vehicle that isn't electric power. True enthusiast, true believer. Okay, any comments, questions? Do you have the electric brakes then working now? Or? No. Not yet. It's, uh, when can I drive it? Yeah, right. <laughs> the brakes that it has are the hydraulic brakes that they all came with on the front. There's a booster system for the front brakes. It's hydraulic pump driven, I'm sorry, electric motor, hydraulic pump, a, a boost. It's not a vacuum boost, it's a hydraulic boost. Like there was Link Lincolns that had that, just they didn't have under room under the hood of that giant Lincoln to get brake boost, so they developed this. So, so has GM made any comment? Not yet. That's not right. yet. <laughs> not yet. You'll know when the men in black suits come to yeah. the Now, the rear currently has no brakes at all. Uh -oh. They're purely electric. Uh, we have several things to do. We're missing the brake torque control module uh, from the driver's side. We're missing it totally. So, if anyone knows where you can get a BTCM or a 97 EV1, <laughs> we really, really <laughs> want one. So we're hoping we can go and snatch it back That's from right, them, either to copy it, which is doable, yeah. or to just have it. And if they ever get theirs up to where it needs it, then we'll negotiate. That would get the brakes back. But we have options. There's other things we can do to get the brakes back. Then we can fit um, one of the newest modulated brake controllers for for trailers, electric brake control for trailers. And we can adapt that in and they're tunable. So we could make a pretty good brake system, but it wouldn't be the same as an EV1. We're trying to get this car totally original. That's our goal. We've built a lot of hybrids and electric vehicles and so on. We know how to do that. The goal here is, is well, to make it the most original EV1 that exists. Here, here. Yeah. We should we should put it back on the trailer, but I'm yeah we go inside where it's warmer. But oh, you want something I should clarify? Uh, this car, by the way, is a hybrid. You may think it's an EV1 electric vehicle. <laughs> it isn't. It's a hybrid because we promised GM that we would turn it into a hybrid, and we will. But we're not going to destroy this EV1. Well, I know that there are people that are absolutely fanatical about electric vehicles. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I wasn't one of them, but I'm gradually coming around to thinking you're right. <laughs> I'm a real believer in plug-in hybrids. Oh, yeah. I think that oh, yeah. is the next big step. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think that in the near future, the manufacturers will do this. They've got to do it, and they will do it. Step beyond that is what I call the 50-50 hybrid, which is half electric drive. And that's what we build at Western. So far, all our hybrids have been 50-50 hybrids. So you always have the options. Well, the next step is 90-10, 90% electric. And it gets you home capability only uh, with an IC engine. And then finally, we'll dump that completely and we'll have electrics. Everything happens in this country incrementally. We don't make radical steps. You guys have, but uh, mostly we don't. And people will buy plug-in hybrids in great numbers. They'll buy 50-50 hybrids in even greater numbers. The 90-10 will become popular. Then there'll be fast recharging or battery exchange stations everywhere. And there'll be no reason at all to have an IC engine. That's the future as I see it. And I think it will happen. So you're right, you're just early.